When you're missing a piece from your collection, do you buy it or do you make it? Well, I did both. Hi, I am ZW and I turn people into figurines. And I'm back with another expressive sculpting attempt. Angry Screaming Drags. Which is fitting because that's exactly how I felt by the end of this project. Come on, please work. But that's for later. Let's get to work. Expressive sculpts comes with their own sets of challenges. You don't want an angry sculpt to be smiling like this. Nor do you want their cheeks to be too puffy, like the Loki sculpt. So we need to have as many references as possible to be as accurate as we can. Which is ridiculous because out of so many screenshots that I've taken, only 9 of him were screaming. Well, now I have an excuse if I fail, right? But let's first take a breather and look at our second victim, Mantis. I bought this from a company called Super Dark. And I gotta say, just like its name, this looks like... Like seriously, if I were to remove the antennas, she looks like a random hipster with green hair and nothing like the actress. And if you have seen my WandaVision repaint video, you know that this can go both ways. Either it's a good sculpt with bad paint or it's just a horrible sculpt. But we won't know until we get rid of her face. So let's bring out the airbrush cleaner. Oh, we have a love-hate relationship. It is a lifesaver when it comes to removing paint but it is also a bitch to most plastics. Remember that little gimmick I did for Harley Quinn? Nothing sticks on silicone. Nothing. Well, turns out that airbrush cleaner hates silicone. I squirt the little onto the body and immediately it cracked like an eggshell. So please be mindful of what you squirt on. And this is the sculpt itself. I don't know, I might not be good enough to save her. Alright, seeing how things aren't doing that well over at Mantis's side, I came back to the sculpting board and suddenly it dawned on me that I have seen this man before. Just like Drax, he is topless and bored and screaming a hell lot. So I googled for some high quality photoshoot images of him to help with the sculpting. And with the newly obtained blueprint, I decided to break symmetry on the sculpture. Meaning I started sculpting a little different on each side of his face, as faces should be. And finally achieved some likeness of Drax. To further aid the illusion of it being Drax, I went on to colour his face grey and added some markings to his face. But before carving the markings on, I slapped on some paws and wrinkles and did some detailings and finally, his flawless face is now disfigured. If you want to see the process of how I place paws, take a look at Snake Eyes. Because for this head, it's time to get it printed. If you're new to painting, fret not, cause it's my first time painting something grey too. So we're in this together. For Mantis, the basics are the same. First, beige base coat. Then some subtle red. I said subtle. Never mind, we can blend it with a brush. Just make sure not to make the same. Okay, it's fine, no pro- What the? It's times like this when painting a second head sculpt could be a much needed distraction. I'm not sure what happened, but maybe subconsciously I dislike the Mantis head sculpt, so I'm sabotaging it? I don't know. But this is different. Drax is my baby. I want to see it come to life. So no mistakes here. Similar to regular painting process, I would assume that Drax has a little redness or blush to his skin tone, so I'm applying some to the grey base tone. See? Perfectly fine. Let's try Mantis again, shall we? Things are still a bit rocky around here, but we have our handy dandy brush. Just a simple dab dab would help blend the redness across the beach. Okay, so I decided to skip this entirely because you can watch my Japanese YouTuber sculpting video for the full painting process. What's interesting is I decided to revisit her, so this is me trying to fix her eyebrows. It's rather intimidating for sure because you don't want to ruin an already painted piece, but I find that if you add more layers of different paint and try to blend it with water, then dry it out with a heat gun, it should turn out okay. 
But of course, if the scope is shit, there's nothing I can do about it. Let's get back to Drax. Drax was fun, cause he's different. Besides the eyes, we have teeth to pay now. How exciting! Wow, is that what my life has become? Painting teeth and tongue makes my heart pump. Damn, I need to go out more often. Nah, I'm happy living in my little bubble. Isn't it amazing how the pandemic is such a great excuse for introverts to reject any social interaction? Let's go out for lunch. Oh, I can't. It's the law. Okay, for the markings, it's basically tracing the line. And to finish it off, we apply some gloss to the eyes and to the outfits we go. Mantis's outfit is simply from Super Dark, so nothing much to say or see. I don't want to waste time censoring door titties, so let's look at Drax instead. He's currently wearing Star Lord's pants, which is a little tight, so Mr. S Crack is out, so please don't get distracted. What I'm doing here is to give a little powder bath to clean it before painting it. I've talked about it in previous videos like Tony and Valkyrie, but I have never shown the full process. So this is it. Here are some oil pastels I use, and even though there's only one grey and it's quite light, I was thinking maybe we could layer a few different colours like we did for the head sculpt, and it might result in the same shade of grey. Basically, you just rub the body and the colour transfers to it pretty well. And after a little brown, a little purple, a little water to blend the colours, it's clear that it's not working out. So here is another set of oil pastels with a bunch of colours, and I was lucky to get one that is exactly the shade of grey. Should've just done it in the first place. These pastels work better when dusted with a finger. So after bleaching drags with the lighter grey as a base, I fingered the body all over, except the lower half because he's gonna wear pants. And now comes the fun part. Markings on the body. I was actually looking forward to this because as I have said, nothing sticks to silicone. So I went to find some industrial markers that are supposedly used to mark tyres. Those are rubber, right? So it should work on this body. But it didn't. After trying again and again, I switched to the thicker marker, equally problematic. So I threw them away and I used a regular pen instead. Who would have thought a regular ballpoint pen would work so well on this body? Until it didn't. The pen tip was just too fine and I was losing patience. I severely underestimated the amount of marking Drax has on his stupid body. And then after taking a much needed break, I came back with a paintbrush. Cause at least the paintbrush has thickness to it. So I went over the pen markings with a fresh coat of paint. I actually don't really like the results of either, but Drax is growing on me. Again, his cheeks might be too fat, and maybe I'm just not skillful enough to fix Mantis. Anyway, if you want to see me torture myself destroying a mini Thanos for a Gamora, here you go. Otherwise, this is playlist of my other customs. Subscribe and I will see you next time.